Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Leterc. I'm a production engineer in the Presto team at Facebook. And before joining Facebook, I worked in a startup building a an analytics product. And as an early employee, I had to build this thing from scratch. So we did a lot of custom software development there. We were a bit intimidated by the different compute engine that existed. I've looked at Presto, but we didn't really try it. We saw that it was really made to run at Facebook scale. So fast forward, uh, one day I flew here and landed in the Bay Area to join the Presto team at Facebook. And I realized that after almost four years at Facebook running Presto, I would have loved to use it in that time in another context. So what is Presto? Presto was created at Facebook in 2012 and open source in 2013. It's really developed in the open, and we push the main features upstream. It's a distributed SQL query engine, and which means basically it takes SQL and executes it in a distributed environment. In Presto, everything is integrated. It has its own scaler, its own way to queue queries, and you don't, ha don't have to integrate it with other systems to perform the execution. You don't need MapReduce or something else. Everything is integrated directly in Presto. At Facebook, it supports um, analytics, for example, for ads. And here, the latencies are around a few hundred milliseconds, and it runs hundreds of concurrent queries. We also use it for A-B testing. And in A-B testing, we are around latencies of a few seconds and we ran hundreds of queries. The initial use case was interactive queries to replace Apache Hive. And then we've seen that Presto was so much efficient that we could apply it also to batch workloads and ETL. One unique feature of Presto is that it supports multiple backends. You can connect it to different data sources and it will figure out how to process data with them. So Presto understand SQL. We try to follow the standards as much as possible to avoid any surprise. Uh, using one language helps to be consistent over time and to avoid to rewrite things when we need to change the backend we use. A single query can cross many different data sources, as we'll see. One some use cases are, for example, joining, for example, between Kafka and MySQL, or migrating from one backend to the other. So what can you query? Here are only a few examples of what you can query. The classical MySQL and PostgreSQL. Um, Kafka, which is completely different. Uh, Apache Hive, which was one of the initial use cases. In here I talk about the format, like the meta store and how data is stored. I don't talk about like MapReduce and the compute engine. It's really how data is, is stored in the data warehouse or in the data lake. And then there are Elasticsearch and MongoDB. And as you know, their data model is really different from what you find in the other ones. So, and even in Mongo, like, it supports a CRUD API. It doesn't support SQL. So is there anything that's not available? And there are many connectors. So these were only examples. But is there something that's not available? You can write your own connector in Java and map some backend to Presto. If you don't want to write Java, there is a special connector called the Swift connector. By writing a Swift service, you can interface with basically anything. So if you can write a Swift service in a language, could be Go, could be Python, could be JavaScript, you can integrate it with Presto. So you can run Presto at any scale. It's easy to run, and, and, and the demo will be just on my laptop using Docker Compose. Um, in the cloud, and there are cloud offerings. Amazon has Asina. Google supports Presto through Dataproc. There are other companies like Treasure Data or Cubal that also provides offering for that. Um, it's really easy to run in containers. At Facebook, we run Presto 
We have run cluster in containers from the beginning. And its configuration makes it really easy to deploy. Um, we do run on premise. And this is something that works pretty well, too. So I'd like to mention that when I say at any scale, like when I've seen it and I wasn't working at Facebook, I was wrong. Like you can really use Presto for small use cases. You can use it for prototyping. You don't need a huge infrastructure. You don't need to start at Facebook scale. Uh, you can query megabytes and then evolve your backend to petabytes. And one reason for that is Presto is adaptive. You don't need a lot of fine tuning to make it work. And also because it supports very low latency, you don't have the overhead for running small queries. So the demo is available on a GitHub repository. It uses Docker Compose. Uh, the goal is to spawn a small cluster with MySQL and, and MongoDB. Um, I'll walk through the demo there. You can try it also after. If you have any question, if you're curious, uh, we have a Presto booth at the developer experience in the open source area. So I'll use a show Jupyter. If there is any uh, Jupyter developer uh, here, I love your work. This is <laughs> really great, and that was very fun to integrate with Presto. So let's go with a small demo. Um, so one thing I wanted to show you is just that the configuration is pretty simple. So we used to use Docker all the time. Uh, but then here's just what we need to deploy Presto. I'll show you some configuration files just after that. So basically, if you try it, there is um, everything in the GitHub repo that should help you to um, get started. And when you, op you open the Jupyter notebook, you'll get the, um, like this notebook FA demo. So I'll walk through it. Um, so Presto, so th there's two ways. There's, Presto comes with a Presto CLI that's a pretty well-designed uh, CLI that supports auto-completion and basically that supports also like history and all things. So here I just connect with it. For example, I I've created a bunch of catalogs. So catalogs is what is mapped to a connector. So here we only use MongoDB and, and MySQL. They could be Hive. There's one that's always shipped with Presto that you can enable, and that's really easy to play with. Um, it's uh, TCPH, what initially was a benchmark. So you can use the Presto CLI that's shipped with Presto. Here, because we use Jupyter, I'll use the, um, the Presto client. Um, so the Presto Python, Python client just performs a HTTP request, which means that it's also very easy to add new client libraries, direct client libraries in many different languages. Um, internally, we use it like with Python, PHP hack, Java, C++. So connecting to Presto doesn't require to compile something or build something. You just send your query over HTTP. Here it mimics the, it implements the DB API interface, which means that you can also wrap it with uh, ORM. And it's very similar to what you have with, um, with uh, MySQL or the Postgres client. So I just want to show you the configuration that I use to run this. And so in production, as you can imagine, we fine tune the configuration. But there's not so many things that you need to add. By default, and that's part of the design philosophy of Presto, it should be adaptive. And you don't need to, to touch and to tune too many parameters. So in Presto, there are two different type of nodes, one which is the main server, which is called the coordinator. Here in that demo, uh, everything, everything runs in a single process for Presto. And you have a discovery protocol that helps the cluster to just scale horizontally. 
you don't need much more to have something that will like go at a larger scale. So for the catalog, as you may be curious on how you connect Presto, for example, to MySQL, these are the only four lines that we need. Presto will then, through its connector, find the right mapping and translate to the right SQL queries. For Mongo, so the configuration is minimal. Um, this is like the only thing I need to just get started. There are other configuration parameters that we can use. So here, basically, in the Jira notebook, we can just play the same thing we've done on the Presto CLI. So you might be curious about how Presto translate some SQL statement to something it can execute. One really nice um, SQL command is explain. And Presto implements like the type distributed is to explain you how it will exchange data when it crosses the boundaries between worker nodes. And the format graph is here is very handy because we can just render it directly in, uh, in Jupyter. So here one thing that is interesting is you see, so you read things from the bottom. Um, this query was made, so this query was made with TCPH. Uh, and you see it directly here. The, the, the boundaries between the boxes is where Presto has to exchange data. You can see it uh, as a shuffle, for example, in MapReduce. So one thing I wanted to show you is that Presto also comes with uh, JSON functions uh, that helps to handle unstructured data. So in that case, we've used uh, the GitHub archive data set, which comes with just plain uh, JSON. And so what bas basically this query does is just to extract some value in nested field um, in, uh, in this data set. So one thing I can also show you, so Presto comes with a UI. And these UIs make it very accessible to understand what's happening. So here we have a very simple cluster, obviously. Uh, there's only one running queries, uh, one query, one active worker. And we can look at how it executes from there. So we have a bunch of attributes that helps to see where the queries come from and, and understand where issues can come from sometimes. We have information, for example, for the different stages. So we've seen them in, in, in boxes. And then we have something that we call the life plan. So the life plan shows the execution of your query in real time. So you have these different stages. The bottom one being the one that reads for MySQL. And so you go up to the top, everything is streamed. So in Presto, even if there is an option to spill to disk, everything is streamed. And this is what makes Presto very efficient and very fast. Aside like a lot of optimization that we've done, uh, for example, in the internal data structures. And again, if you want to know more about the internals, because the goal of this presentation is really to be an introduction, but if you're really curious, like come talk to us and ask questions. We're really happy to answer them. So, I've been a bit ambitious about like running this data set here. Um, so one other thing is, I'll tell you is, you can just, for example here, I can just create a table in MongoDB from the data that is in SQL, in my SQL. So which is what I'm gonna run. So, so this was the result from before. Um, in Jupyter, things execute asynchronously. So you've seen here that we filter and get the push event to some repository, and we've done a top 10. And then, the 
and then I need to debug my query. So So here, basically, the goal of the query is really to read directly from my SQL and to, to write directly to Mongo. So the Presto connector will do all the translation from SQL to the create API in Mongo. And this is what it does to, uh, to all the, the different data backend it supports. So the other connector is that its support are documented directly here. Uh, there's much more. If you want to try to build something with a Swift connector, for example, with the team, we just said, oh, why not creating a connector to directly query some GraphQL endpoints or some of these things? So if you're excited about that, that's something that, that could be re really great. Uh, we also have a Slack community that you can join and talk about different use cases. So. That's it for the, the, the short demo. Uh, I invite you to go to the GitHub repository. You can fork it. You can like provide feedback. That's uh, a, good, um, a good base like to start doing something like with a simple cluster with MySQL and MongoDB. Um, we can just switch to the slide again. Because Presto is an open source project. And we really welcome contributions. Contribution can come from many different parts. There's like this, this compiler part, and so we talked about compiling SQL. Uh, there is everything about the execution engine. And you can really see Presto also as a distributed operating system. But there are so many things where you can contribute also from new connectors from the web UI. As you've seen, there, there are things that we can do even better to understand like queries. Uh, client libraries, also there are languages that are not covered. And like tools and documentation. We got a lot of feedback from the community about how to use Presto and what are the different use cases, just how to solve problems is also something that people expect. Here are a couple of references. You can go to uh, uh, the website to get more references. If you're really curious also about the internals, there is the Presto paper. Um, it was submitted at, at the ICD conference. It explained like why Presto is so fast and how it works internally. And I like to like just show that we use Jupyter here, and as you've seen, the integration is pretty pretty easy. So again, if you want to know more about Presto, we really welcome you in the, the developer experience area. Thank you.